did he say to Joseph? He said, Thou shalt be a fruitful bough. A branch. Branch. Thou shalt be a fruitful branch running over the wall. And the archers will shoot at him, but it won't bother Joseph. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is to be a fruitful plant. Uh, here it is my father glorified. Jesus said that you bring forth much fruit. I think it's a time to bring fruit for it. It's a time. It's the end of time. And the church must be around. And I am the only, I, I just want to stir you all up. I'm not going to let you sleep, uh, sleep in those seats out there. Hey Amen. I'll bring the old cottonwood benches back in here uh, before I let you sleep in those pews. Praise the name of the Lord. We used to have the cottonwood benches in the church. And I started out ministering in the sawdust floor. Praise our God. I, the first church I pastored in uh, Fort Myers, Florida, had a sawdust floor. And I slept on the platform after church. I had an army cop yes. that I couldn't afford a motel, Jesus. and a young Zealous minister, and so I just put me an army cop in the back of my car, unfolded it at night, when everybody was gone, said good night to the last person, Damn. closed the door, and uh, got on the platform, made my bed, yeah. went to sleep, got up the next morning, and we had a pitcher pump outside in a well, and I went out and washed my face, and, and uh, I used the portable unit that we had on the property, and uh, that was my beginning yeah. of ministry. Uh, I had more mosquitoes than people some night <laughs> to preach to at uh, Fort Myers. Uh, but I, I didn't let that stop me. I didn't let that discourage me. Yeah. Now, you ought to change a lot of circumstances that's keeping you out of the house of God. Oh. Well, I'll starve to death if I do. You know, you'll fast. Praise God. God will bless you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I said you'll fast and God will bless you. Uh, you see, uh, change circumstances. Don't let circumstances change you. You change circumstances. And let God move in your life because you change circumstances. But if you let circumstances keep changing you, Oh, Brother Marlowe, I'll have no place to sleep. Oh, if, I, if, I, if I increase my time with God, uh, I declare that arthritis will eat me up. No, it won't. Because God crucifies the rightest brothers. Neuritis, arthritis, he takes care of them. Praise our God. Amen. He's going to let them overcome you. Praise the name of the Lord. I declare I'll have to take two more Tylenols in the morning if I... Uh, get out of bed earlier than I have. No, you want? You'll see the sunrise. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Don't bend to your circumstances. Don't bend to what's happening around you. Change your circumstances. Don't let your circumstances change you. The three Hebrew children changed their circumstances. They were in the fiery furnace. Did the furnace change them, or did they change the furnace? Praise God, I ask you the question, who changed who? Amen. They changed the fire. Ordinary fire will burn you up, melt you to a grip. But they changed the fire, and they added a fourth man in the fire, and praise God when that king said, I, Lord, did we not cast three men into that fire? They said, you did, old king. He said, well, I see the fourth man who's going to shout. Praise God. Well, I see a fourth man. Praise God. I see a fourth man. We must witness to the world right now and get the fourth man in the fire. Don't let the fire burn you up. Don't let the fire melt you. But change the fire to where you are changing the influence around you rather than the influence changing you. Praise the name of the Lord. All my life I've done that. That's been my testimony uh, from the word go. Uh, I, uh, and I believe tonight God wants us to do that. Now, let me make welcome uh, a wonderful family that I met tonight. I felt the presence of God in my short meeting of them as I came in the sanctuary, uh, but from Zephyr Hills. We had a young man visit us last Sunday, a week ago, Mark, Brother Mark, 
um, and he brought another man with him today. I think his name was James, Brother James. Uh, but anyhow, we want to pray for this man yes. that was with Brother Mark. Brother Mark sat yes. right back here, right. fine-looking young man. Yes. And, uh, and and he, uh, the, man, the, the brother that was with him today, he's never been here, but he told me after service, he said, Brother Marlowe, um, I, I came here because I heard you people believe in divine healing. We do. And we do. Uh, my wife, my wife is dying with cancer of the throat. Oh, Lord. Her tongue is so swollen in her mouth now from cancer that she cannot eat. She cannot eat. She's starving to death. She cannot speak. Uh, her tongue has swelled. Cancer does that in your throat. Uh, cancer, that's the reaction of cancer in the throat. And he said, Brother Marlowe, do you believe that God could heal her? I said, dear brother, I know that I can't heal anybody. I'm not a healer, but he is. There's nothing in my hands, but there's everything in his hands. I give him the glory. I give him the power. Praise God. There are people in the generation we're in right now, the whole creation. Romans 8 chapter is being fulfilled. The whole creation groaneth and travaileth together in pain. There are thousands of people dying with cancer, suffering with cancer. It can't be cured by medical science. It just isn't being cured. There's hundreds of people with different diseases and illnesses. The hospitals are full, overrunning. Yes. Every health facility is employing more people. They're building bigger ones, they are. bigger nursing homes, they are. bigger assisted care living facilities because we live in a generation that is cursed for the fallen nature of sin and they need the healer to come back among them. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I told this man, I said, you believe God with me? I'll believe God with you and your wife can be healed. Uh, I, this is wonderful what God is doing right now to stir people to believe that God can heal them, can help them. There's a suffering. It, I don't believe this thing that people are turned off from God right now. They've never found God. How can they be turned off? How can they be turned off? They've never found him. Praise God. I want them to find him. I want them to see the manifestation of the sons of God. So this family is with us tonight. This brother Mark, he lived in Zephyr Hills until a couple of weeks ago, I believe he told me, or so. But in that uh, in that place of Zephyr Hills, a beautiful place in our country here, uh, rolling hills of Florida, I call it, um, they, uh, uh, he came down, I think he's moved this area now, and, but he knew uh, Pastor Newcomb sitting to my right here. Brother Pastor Newcomb, lift up your hand. Pastor Newcomb and his wife, Sister Newcomb, right beside him, and Sister Brenda right here. Is that right? Praise God. We're so happy to have these folks from Zephyr Hills tonight. They drove down to be in this service. Pastor Newcomb, I, I can feel he's a man of God. They have a campground in Zephyr Hill. Yes. Uh, they, they have a campground there that God has given them to labor with and to work Praise there. God. We're so blessed to have them. Yes. We're so blessed to have them. And I'm truly here. Praise our God. I know they're people of God. And I can feel they're people of God. And I know uh, that they are children of of God, and so I, I want them to be. I want to welcome Pastor Newcomb and Brenda Newcomb tonight. Praise our God! And I want you to, uh, Pastor Newcomb, to say something and greet the people, um, because I never let a man of God come here and not be honored of the Lord. That's right. And I don't know you uh, in the term of years or longevity in ministry, but I know you in the spirit. And I'm, I'm so happy. And I know you're not here by accident. No. I know Praise that God, God brought you here tonight. Yes. I know. 
We're, we, this, this, I've been ministering here 56 years of this church. Um, I, uh, this church is not a denomination. It, it's a member of the body of Christ, of uh, the universal church of the living God. Uh, we're not denominated. Uh, we, I've never in 56 years uh, solicited people to join this church. Uh, I tell them to join Christ attach themselves to Christ. Uh, when they walk through the door, they are a part of this uh, assembly. They're a part of this church because their name is written in the same book as mine. And it's not a church book here. It's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise the name of the Lord. And the blood that's in them is in me because the blood of Christ is in them and it's in me. So I welcome this pastor and his uh, family here tonight. And if there's others here, I saw another couple coming tonight with Eric back here. God bless you, children. I see you right over here. Are you from this area here? May the Lord bless you good. We're glad you came tonight. May the Lord bless you. Welcome to the church. Welcome to We're happy that you're here. And we want you to be at home with us. And we want the Lord to lift each one of you up and to and use you tonight. That be his will. And, uh, but we want brother and sister, uh, here comes Sister Brenda to be welcome. And uh, we're just happy that you have come. And anyone else that is here with us tonight uh, that is visiting for the first time, uh, but we want you to be at home and know we love you very, very much. Praise God. And we've had a great day, and the Lord has blessed the church. The Lord has blessed the people of God. And I met another new family here for the first time today. Uh, a lot of new people coming in now and among the church. Um, and uh, I met them. They was in, I was eating dinner in the dining room, and uh, they walked up back of me. A brother Abimelech Morales. Brother Abimelech Morales. Uh, and so Abimelech was in the Old Testament, but he's also in my dining room, or our dining room, this afternoon. Now that name, now he's always, uh, he did not reach the highest rung on the ladder, you know, with the favor of God. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, his last name is Morales, and, and we're very happy. I don't, he didn't stay tonight, but he said he saw us on the internet. And there's a lot of people seeing us on the internet now, watching here. And he said, Brother Marlowe, he said, I want to tell you, he has three boys, he uh, has three boys, and, it, and I, uh, three young men, and he said, uh, the reason I'm here, I came to see what this church is about. He said, I saw you running all over the church speaking in tongues. And you were speaking in tongues there, and you were speaking in tongues there, and you were speaking in tongues over there, and he said, I gotta go see this man that runs over a church and speaks in tongues. Did you know you don't know what is going to draw people about your peculiar manifestation? I tell people, why don't you manifest God? Somebody may be watching. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. How, how, how's people gonna be stirred up if they don't watch you and you do something besides eat uh, bacon and eggs for breakfast? Amen. And that's not too peculiar. Millions do that. Praise God. But when you are peculiar enough that you let the glory of God move in you, praise the name of the Lord. So he came to see what we're about. Praise God, he came to see. Praise the name of the Lord. People are going to come to see. We're living in a day when if you'll get busy and do what I said, enlarge your vision up to slice off, eliminate circumstances that's keeping you from giving your all to God, uh, you're going to find out that people will come to see you burn wherever you are. They, 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 the people see a manifestation of the sons of God. They don't see God. They see a manifestation of God. There's no man ever seen God and his face and live. But Jesus, uh, the manifestation of the sons of God. So that's enough for me. Praise God. I, I want to make way for others tonight. I want to welcome you. And uh, 
Thank God. Praise, uh, God. praise God. Sister Chantel, God bless you. Uh, you know, Sunday a week ago, this lady got delivered and healed, and here she is in church tonight. Praise my God. Amen, 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 amen. So God is good all the time, and we're going to praise him tonight, and we're going to... Uh, we're going to give our Sunday night offering here in a minute, uh, here at the offering box, and do the victory march. Just do what God tells you to. I love giving. And, and somebody said, Brother Marley, you are always excited about the offering. I really am. And I'm more excited when that box is bolted. Praise our God. Amen. When it's overflowing, I'm even more excited because I know what God is know what God can do. That's there are no impossibilities with God. No impossibilities. No, 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 there are no impossibilities. Nothing. God will bless you God if you'll bless Him. God will love you Amen. if you love Him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to uh, do that, and we're going to say thank you, Lord, uh, for this day. Now I've got another special thing before we do that. I looked out there and saw two of the sheep that I have missed so very much. Yeah, yeah. They are back in service tonight. Arlene and Ray. Mark, praise our God. We missed you, Arlene. We missed you, Ray, right there in the middle of that church. And I, I, I want to tell you this. God has given them a great victory because they have gone through the most excruciating moment that you can ever live on this earth. Their granddaughter was taken to be with the Lord three weeks ago, was it? Yeah. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, their 20-year-old granddaughter was taken to be with the Lord. But they have survived that moment through God being with them. Yeah, that's right. They have come through that moment. Yeah, uh, that, that there's nothing more excruciating a pain in your spirit than to lose a granddaughter, a son, a daughter, as a parent. Yeah. But God brought them through. Yeah. God has brought them through. Thank you. And they have felt the love of this community. Yes. And they felt, right, Sister Arlene, you felt the love of this church. And we love you. I was yeah. there the night with them. And when it happened, and I was there, and I felt the love of God coming to them to mend and heal them. And uh, thank God. You're going to be stronger than you've ever been. God has unseen blessing for you. God has unseen strength for you. And God will uh, he'll fill that place by letting her live in your heart, live in your spirit. And she's with God. And you're with God. And one day together you will be with God. Praise the name of the Lord. What a beautiful moment that is. We're so glad to see them back in the service. We want to remember Carol Crawford operated on uh, for, I believe, the ear. Her ear was operated on some type of infection. Uh, that is, she will be, um, you know, Tuesday, a uh, very early morning operation up in Waycross, Georgia. Carol used to be with us here. Praise God. So we want to make you welcome tonight and be at home with us. Hope I get acquainted with each one that I haven't. And the Lord give us whatever he wants to give us tonight uh, whomever God will use we have no script here we have no program uh, we, we, so whomever God will touch anoint tonight of the elders here of the men of God of the children of God do you have a song do you have a praise do you have a joy in your heart express it let God use you trio duet whatever it would be praise God brother Don Merrill Yes, Brother Behrman was here this afternoon, and we know that he needs strength from God. So let's remember Don Merriman, also uh, Brother Don here in the nursing home. Uh, let's remember him as well, Don Norman. And so we're just happy that all of you are here. What a good, beautiful Sunday night. And we want to pray for the Schoen family on their way home from bereavement and losing sister-in-law, uncle up in Kentucky. And they're on their way back. So let's remember them and all the Sister Judy's shop, Manatee Memorial, and just keep on praying for every child of God that you can think of and others can. 
praise God. Uh, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm not going to ask you to, uh, God, he heard us ask for those people. But I want you to rise up with your pastor and give him praise for what he has done for you. Yes. Right now, however you do silently, on your knees standing, uh, however, why don't we rise up together and give the Lord a praise offering for what he has done for us. In the name of Jesus, I lift my voice and I lift my heart and I lift my spirit and I say thank you, Lord, for letting us be together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of your people. Thank you, Lord, for breath and life and strength. I pray tonight that you will touch the woman with cancer in her mouth. That you will touch Lord Judy in the hospital. That you will continue to heal Ray and Arlene, Lord. That you will continue to be with us, Sean. Lord, everyone, everyone that needs you tonight, I know that you will be there with them. And I pray in the Holy Ghost that the Lord of glory will direct the church and direct it and let us worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, be exalted among us. We know you're able to take care of us, to heal us, to be with us, and to go with us. In the name of Jesus, Everyone said, praise the Lord. And praise the Lord. Good to see Brother Dale Wilson, Sister Joan, able to be here tonight. And the Lord continuing to give Dale strength. Praise God. So we're going to just receive our offering tonight. I don't know what we have this afternoon, but we'll just say, Lord, bless the offering tonight. And let it be bountiful. So just come and give the way we do it. We have a song of praise. And if, you, if you're not able to come, then hand your offering to an usher or somebody next to you. And just come and give right now as God has given you. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give him a praise offering as we come. Amen, amen, amen.